you for joining us uh, and welcome to the second Kyushu uh, Myanmar uh, Medical uh, Education Seminar. Uh, I'm Dr. Tomohiko Moriyama from Kyushu University Hospital, Japan. Uh, before starting this session, I would like to have an opening remarks from Dr. Professor Zhou Wai So. Uh, would you give us uh, some brief talk? Yes. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Tomohiko Moriyama. Uh, 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 first of all, I would like to uh, say uh, thanks, and also I would like to greet you all. Good morning. I think good morning in Myanmar, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, Konnichiwa in Japan. And uh, as to all the audience from Myanmar and audience from Yango and audience from Japan. Actually, uh, as you already mentioned, this is a second Jushu Myanmar Medical Education Seminar. Uh, actually, we uh, participated in the 67 Myanmar Medical Conference organized, uh, this seminar organized by the Jushu University Hospital and University of Medicine Wan Yango uh, jointly uh, organized. And uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, we, we have discussed just now, you know, uh, COVID-19, because of the COVID-19, otherwise we will be face-to-face -face, uh, conference in the Myanmar and then participating in the Myanmar Medical Association Medical Conference. But I think that COVID, there's uh, some opportunities uh, because we are now more connected. I mean, uh, uh, you can participate all from all over the world, not only from Myanmar. That's why, you know, Myanmar doctors from the remote area, Myanmar doctors from the other region, and Myanmar doctors from the hard to reach area, they can join uh, this meeting. And also, at the same time, we can share and we can help, uh, you know, uh, audience from the Japan and other countries. That's why I think COVID-19, uh, we have some good things and bad things uh, we're having. And I also like to uh, acknowledge and also congratulate, I mean, Professor Shuzi Shibmasu, uh, because, you know, uh, his futuristic thinking and advanced idea since 2002 you know, telemedicine development in Asia. I think this is a, a very much uh, ahead of time thinking. Because of that, in now, uh, in COVID uh, uh, crisis pandemic, uh, our telemedicine program is very much, you know, advanced and useful, and then also having uh, connected between the uh, two, two country and university. Jushu University and uh, 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 Myanmar University. And uh, actually this program funded by the Project for Global Growth of Medical Technology System and Service through the Human Resource Development in 2020 and National Center for Global Health and Medicine and the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare Japan supported by the JTEC. And, uh, and it, 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 today, uh, uh, conference, in conference, we have two sections. This is the first section. Uh, uh, this is the first section regarding with the endoscopy. And I would like to thanks to the Professor Lu uh, uh, taking the chair, and then also participating, and then also organizing in this uh, section. And uh, after that, uh, we, are, we have a second section. It will be uh, a surgery section. And then uh, at that time, Professor Chun Wu will be uh, participating as uh, a will be chair uh, with the sharing with the Professor Shuzi Shimasu. And uh, I don't want to take that much time. I, I would like to congratulate and I would like to thank all of you uh, all the speaker and then also uh, organizer who uh, organized to uh, come through the uh, endoscopy section in the Myanmar Medical Association conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to hand it to the Professor Fabian, please. Yes. The first session will be chaired by Professor 
Moriyama. So, Professor Moriyama, could you please share the first session? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I'd like. Okay, then so the, I'd like to talk uh, about an uh, gastric cancer as a first presenter. So, uh, please share my slide. Okay, uh, today uh, I'd like to talk about an approach for elimination of gastric cancer deaths. Okay, this is a heat map of an gastric cancer incidence. Uh, actually, Japan and also Myanmar is one of the high risk area for gastric cancer in the world. But its situation is a bit different. In Japan, uh, incidence is very, very high like this, but its mortality is less than one third comparing to its incidence. But in other countries, including Myanmar, its incidence and the mortality is almost the same. It means once the patient is diagnosed as having gastric cancer, most of them died of gastric cancer. So what is the key factors of low gastric cancer mortality in Japan? Actually, there are so many new <laughs> factors like this, such as a cheap health checkup system, free access to healthcare providers, low patient copayment, many endoscopists, various new modalities, but most important factor is early diagnosis. Uh, uh, actually, the most about uh, 70 to 80% of uh, gastric cancer is diagnosed in early stage in Japan. On the other hand, as you know, H. Perry plays an important carcinogenic role in gastric cancer. Once the H. Perry infected the normal mucosa, chronic gastritis happen. And based on the uh, chronic inflammation, uh, mucosa atrophy is induced and the gastric cancer arise from those kinds of uh, atrophic mucosa. So other way to uh, reduce the gastric cancer mortality is eradication of H. pylori, like this. Okay, this is the report from Japan in 2008. Uh, this is a, uh, in this patient, uh, H. pylori was eradicated after endoscopic resection. And uh, comparing uh, to, uh, uh, the patient was divided into two groups. One is eradicated group and the other is a non-eradicated group. Comparing to this, these two groups, gastric cancer incidence decreased to one third by H. pylori eradication. So based on this study, uh, the, uh, all the people with H. pylori uh, was uh, covered by health insurance system for eradication in Japan. And furthermore, uh, since 2000, the patient with uh, peptic ulcers or some other diseases uh, which related to the H. pylori infection uh, was supported by the health, uh, the, uh, by those kinds of people uh, are supported by health insurance coverage for eradication. Furthermore, uh, the, its uh, copayment is very cheap, around $15 US dollars. And furthermore, uh, the prevalence of H. pylori in Japanese is decre dramatically decreasing due to the uh, rapid increase, increase, uh, improvement of public health. So, uh, in t uh, of course, uh, still the uh, elder people are high, uh, H. eradication, uh, H. pylori ratio is uh, high, but in teenagers, the H. pylori infected ratio is less than 10%. Even in this situation, uh, gastric cancer incidence is not so decreased actually comparing to its mortality. So that's why I think 
to reduce the gastric cancer mortality by H. pylori eradication like this, long time is needed. But the gastric decreasing gastric mortality, gastric cancer mortality is emerging. So we should find the gastric cancer in early stage. These are the requirements for early gastric cancer detection by endoscopy. Adequate preparation, reduction of blind spots in the stomach, enough examination time for endoscopy, and good endoscopic photos, and of course, knowledge of endoscopic, endoscopic findings of gastric cancer. Just after intubating the scope, we can find an mucus and forms on the gastric mucosa like left pictures. So first we should remove mucus and forms using the uh, adequate uh, water or something. And then we also should take care of the blind spots. Actually, there are numerous uh, area of blind spots in the stomach during endoscopy. Uh, the, this area, uh, this area that is in a high risk for the, uh, sorry, uh, sometimes we can, we miss the tiny lesion in this area, posterior wall of corpse, lesser curvature of cardia, greater curvature of phonix. So we should take much care to watch this area in, by endoscopy. And examination time is also very important. Uh, this study compares the two groups. One is a peop, uh, group, the examination time is less than seven minutes and others are more than seven minutes. Comparing these two groups, the neoplastic lesion detected is uh, totally different. So we should uh, take more than seven minutes in one endoscopic examination. And also we should take good photos. What is good photo? No forms, no mucus on the mucosa, no residue, no camera shake, and also adequate air volume is very important. And we should take many photos in adequate position and if there is a lesion, better to make lesion in the center. Then we can find a subtle change of gastric mucosa like this. Actually, there are three gastric, early gastric cancer in this photo. All these lesions were treated by endoscopic resection. Also, we should uh, take care. Uh, we sh these are the tips for early gastric cancer detection. Usually, early gastric cancer shows flat form, so we should take care of these findings. Slight surface changes, color changes, disappearance of vascular networks, changes of light reflection, second or irregular fold, and spontaneous bleeding. So daily and continuous education is quite important. Based on these good photos, we can make a discussion or a lecture. We can get an adv uh, advices from experts and all the photos taken by young trainees were reviewed by the, our colleagues. And also we can do a, we can brush up our technique using simulator or something. And now, as Professor Zouai So mentioned, we can learn uh, and share the knowledge through the internet like this. We actually, we have uh, many teleconferences with Asian countries. This, is, this photo shows an uh, endoscopy session connecting many Asian countries. Uh, at that time, the, uh, Myanmar, uh, doctor joined from the Myanmar like this and have some discussion uh, and uh, share our knowledge 
uh, with Asian friends. So if you are interested in, please uh, contact us. Okay, these are our my take home messages. Only H. pylori eradication isn't good enough to reduce gastric cancer mortality. Endoscopic exam is essential to detect early gastric cancer. We can share knowledge and experience for early gastric cancer detection through international teleconferences. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Oriyama, for your very informative information about H. pylori and gastric cancer. So could you please introduce the second speaker for our session? So could, could you please introduce the second speaker for presentation? Okay, all right. Okay, then are, we, are, we, are we going to have a question after all the presentations? All the three speakers. Right, okay, okay good. I got you. Okay, yep. then I'd like to invite the second speaker. Uh, second speaker is Dr. Takahisa Nagahata. Right? He is an uh, endoscopist. Okay, uh, he will talk about the colorectal cancer. So, uh, would you start presentation? Thank you for introducing me. Uh, I will talk about how to detect colorectal cancer. Uh, this is a, a heat map of HIV justice mortality rates of colorectal cancer in the world. Uh, this is uh, higher uh, in the Japan and Myanmar is here. Uh, it's a uh, slightly lower uh, mortality. In, the Myanmar. Then this is uh, age adjusted uh, incidence and mortality of colorectal cancer between Myanmar and Japan. Uh, it is similar to uh, gastric cancer uh, in Myanmar. Uh, incidence and mortality is nearly. Uh, in Japan, uh, incidence is higher than uh, mortality uh, more than three times. Uh, then uh, similar gastric cancer uh, in Japan, incidence of cancer is a uh, higher number, but uh, mortality is low about uh, incidence of cancer. It, then uh, importance is a uh, fast uh, detect of uh, colorectal cancer. Uh, In the first uh, background, uh, adenoma, can, adenoma can lead to uh, colorectal cancer is no, known about. And, uh, but 20% uh, of adenomas are missed uh, during colonoscopy one times. And uh, three to 8% of uh, patients with colorectal cancer had a colonoscopy within uh, three to five years ago. Then increasing adenoma uh, detection rate, its ADR can reduce colorectal cancer deaths. This is what is ADR, adenoma uh, detection rate. Uh, it is uh, a rate of number of cases having more than uh, more than one chronic adenoma in number of cases uh, underwent colonoscopy. This is uh, a date of uh, adenoma detection rate is a good uh, quality indicator of colonoscopy. Uh, this ADR uh, in this part of ADR is higher than a half in half hour uh, uh, half year to a uh, five year uh, who detected uh, who uh, who was underwent a colonoscopy and detected uh, colorectal cancer is higher than uh, 
the lower area of uh, who went a colonoscopic test. Then uh, it is a relationship of ADR and uh, colorectal cancer. Then uh, lower ADR for uh, 30 or 50 percent is uh, more uh, low risk of interval colorectal cancer. Then each 1% increase of ADR was associated with a 3% decrease in the risk of correct cancer. So second, uh, why a chronic region was uh, missed in colonoscopy? Uh, it is related to parasclerosis by endoscopies, um, uh, anatomic problem, like uh, a hepatic or splenic fracture and chronic folds, and uh, it is missed uh, uh, problem of miss in the flat regions. And uh, pre preparation of colonoscopy is a problem. Then uh, I will speak about uh, anatomical problems and uh, who, how to detect uh, flat regions. It is a uh, new techniques of colonoscopy, a uh, cap assisted colonoscopy, and retroflexic technique and water exchange colonoscopy. Then uh, I will speak about cap assisted colonoscopy and retroflexion technique. Uh, using a cap like this and uh, into uh, cap acid colonoscopy is uh, using like this cap and uh, hold a chronic fold. Then we will uh, easy to detect uh, adenomas, uh, the other polyps like this. Reflection techniques is uh, reflection. Like this, uh, the behind of uh, the polyps and in a behind the fold, and a uh, reflection technique using uh, we can see the other ones, and uh, in rectum, difficult to see these polyps to. Um, usual way, but uh, using our reflection techniques, uh, we can see these polyps. Uh, yes. This is an uh, efficacy of uh, cap assisted colonoscopy for uh, the normal detection. Uh, This data uh, using a cap uh, assisted colonoscopy, and uh, it is uh, uh, we can uh, shorten the. Uh, it's a short uh, time to the uh, seeker reaction and uh, more detection rate of uh, adenomas in this case. Uh, this is a, a technological ad advancement in colonoscopy. Uh, High definition colonoscopy, uh, wide angle colonoscopy, and uh, side uh, uh, retroscopy, scope, and uh, free spectrum endoscopy, and more. Uh, we will speak about high definition endoscopy and wide angle uh, colonoscopy. 
the development of endoscopy, uh, we will, uh, we can uh, see this right image uh, as a high definition endoscopy, uh, more than high uh, definition. Then the uh, older endoscopy as like left image, And after uh, uh, 20, uh, uh, 20 to uh, 11 years and uh, wide angle endoscopy, uh, cross endoscopy, uh, microscopy is uh, developed and some older uh, colonoscopy can see uh, 140 angles like this, but a uh, wider colonoscopy like this is 170 angles. Then uh, we can see the more uh, A wide area of the uh, uh, colon and can detect uh, more adenomas in colonic region. And uh, I will speak about flat region, how to detect, uh, how to detect colonic flat region is uh, this. Uh, take care of the following findings. Uh, slight reddish mucosa and this pyramid of vascular network, uh, abnormal right refraction, uh, sickness and irregular nocturnes fold, uh, and disappearance of fine network, etc. Uh, in this image, uh, where is the flood region? Is, uh, it is uh, adenoma in the uh, maybe a, a hepatic fracture and it is a uh, slightly a reddish and uh, absence of vascular network and spray uh, pigments we can see this polyps like this the second uh, the flat is region is seen in this area and uh, after spraying of pigment this region is seen like this the uh, importance is uh, it's similar to uh, former from this um, reddish area and uh, the abnormal reflection of lights is uh, useful for finding this. And most important is uh, spring up pigment like this, and we can see more. Uh, this uh, Adamos right and this rectum uh, a flat region is exists in the, this image but it is difficult to, to see a, a quite right uh, observation the spray uh, pigment this flat region is exists in this area. Then like this uh, flat region, uh, chromo endoscopy is uh, most useful to see. Uh, this is a 
taking home message and um, repeated training to uh, quite important how to get to the uh, allocated scale for uh, intubation and detector adenomas. Increasing uh, adenoma detection rate is the best way to uh, prevent patients for, uh, from uh, colorectal cancer death. Thank you for attention. Okay. Thank you, Dr. <coughs> Nagahata. And okay, then we would like to invite the third speaker, Dr. Nao Fujimori. Uh, he will talk about the uh, bioduct stones. So. Fujimori, we just start the presentation. Oh, okay, uh, thank you, Chairman, for kind introduction. And uh, uh, my name is now Fujimori from Kyushu University. So I am now engaged in the endoscopic pancreatic uh, <coughs> endoscopy using the uh, including the US and the RCP. So uh, today's seminar is uh, about the uh, endoscopic management of bile stones. Okay, this slide shows uh, today's agenda. And uh, first three, uh, I would like to talk about the uh, management of acute cholangitis. And I would like to introduce a Tokyo guideline. <clears throat> and the second, endoscopic removal by duct stone. And especially for the uh, difficult stones. Okay. So acute cholangitis, uh, as you know, HG is, uh, is a very important disease uh, because by duct stone, a CBD stone, is a major cause of AC, and uh, AC is a common disease in an emergency unit. And the uh, severe AC sometimes can be lethal. So therefore, uh, recognizing appropriate and prompt management of AC is essential for all clinicians. So uh, diagnosis of AC, <coughs> as you know, the charcoal triad uh, including right upper quadrant pain, abdominal pain, and fever, and jaundice. It's a very simple and uh, uh, famous uh, criteria for a uh, diagnosis of AC. And uh, its specificity is very high. And but on the other hand, the uh, sensitivity is low. So we need a uh, more accurate diagnostic criteria. Uh, from these uh, conditions, uh, uh, Tokyo guideline is uh, established as a um, international consensus guideline. So this table shows the uh, diagnosis criteria uh, for AC in proposed in the Tokyo guideline. And the <coughs> diagnosis criteria is consists of three pathologies. And uh, one is the systemic information and cholestasis and imaging. And the systemic information must be present. And uh, in addition, if the patient has a cholestasis, such as jaundice, or the BDR lesion by the imaging modalities, if these conditions we strongly suspect uh, acute cholangitis. And uh, another important point of the severity of AC. So this is also shows the uh, uh, severity criteria grading in Tokyo guideline. <clears throat> and grade C, very severe condition, severe acute cholangitis is that AC with any one of organ dysfunction, uh, such as cardiovascular dysfunction, or neurological, or respiratory, or renal dysfunction. And the grade two, and the moderate cholangitis is AC with any two of the following, uh, such as uh, uh, abnormality of the uh, inflammatory response and high fever, and higher age and the hyperbilirubinemia or hyperalbuminemia. And the grade one and the mild cholangitis does not meet uh, grade three or grade two. This uh, grading is very important because uh, timing of biliary drainage should be determined according to this grading. And that is a uh, grade one is mild AC 
It can be managed with, uh, usually can be managed with antibiotics, uh, but uh, grade two, moderate AC required early drainage, uh, usually within the two or three days. And grade three, very severe condition. Severe AC is uh, required urgent period drainage and with uh, organ support. Okay, so again, uh, timing of period drainage uh, should be determined this grading. So, uh, Accurate diagnosis and grading of AC is very important for all clinicians. And the video drainage <coughs> is uh, uh, now is uh, <coughs> first choice is endoscopic drainage, uh, including ERCP using ERCP technique, and that is transpapillary drainage. And when ERCP is difficult in the due to the various regions. And the second choice is percutaneous drainage, including PTBD or PTGBD. And the nowadays, recently, the new uh, drainage method in, using, e, uh, the, <coughs> using endoscopy, that is EUSPD, EUS guided drainage, is emerged. So for these conditions uh, nowadays, uh, surgical drainage and uh, rarely performed uh, for <coughs> in this condition for BDL drainage, I think. So uh, this is a schema of ERCP. It's, uh, I think it's the first choice of video drainage. So I would write, uh, we insert the duodenoscope to the major papilla and uh, to transpapillary <coughs> uh, video intervention uh, will be performed. So I'd like to show the typical case of severe cholangitis. And uh, this case is, uh, I, we experienced this case just one week ago and uh, 70 years old, and uh, he male, and he has previous history of IgG4 related uh, cholangitis. And he had fade, fatigue and appetite loss for several days and uh, disturbance of consciousness uh, appeared. So he transferred to our emergency department and uh, his general condition is very bad with high fever, uh, with hypotension and uh, renal dysfunction, uh, respiratory dysfunction. And he has a ten, uh, abdominal tenderness. So laboratory data examination reveals a marked elevation of the inflammatory response. And in addition, the low blood rate and the <coughs> liver dysfunction and the renal dysfunction. So from these findings, we strongly suspect of a severe acute cholangitis. So we performed the CT and the CT detected the BDI dilation and the CBD stone. So a uh, definite diagnosis of severe acute cholangitis uh, we can obtain. And uh, <coughs> he has also a septic shock state with uh, multiple organ dysfunction. So we plan the urgent period drainage with intensive care. And the patients uh, directly go to the, from the emergency department to the, our endoscopic room and we perform the ERCP. This is a papilla, the first biliary cannulation after the cannulation, the continuous sputtering of prurient bile from the papilla. Many, many large amount of the bile <coughs> uh, you can see from the endoscopic view. This is a typical sign of the uh, acute severe cholangitis. And we insert is a guide wire into the hepatic duct. The insert is a, a plastic stent with a nasobiliary and drainage tube as an external drainage. Okay, you can see the inside the stent and the uh, outside stent. So the, that case was a typical case and uh, we endoscopic drainage using ear strip technique, but there's nowadays the new drainage method uh, using, uh, using endoscopy is emerging and the USBD is guided drainage, uh, but is uh, today's lecture time is limited so I would like to uh, only introduce the concept of USPD using a video. Okay. <clears throat> so first three, uh, we inserted the echo endoscope into the stomach. And uh, from the stomach, we the puncture into the hepatic, left into the hepatic by duct and uh, by the way, insertion into the CBD. After that, and the metallic stent for this case inserted. So 
for this technique、uh, using all the USHG as hepatical gastrostomy is completed. And this endoscopic and US guided、uh, method treatment is very rapidly developed. So, in the future, maybe one of the attractive options for BDI drainage. So, the second topic is、uh, endoscopic removal of b i l e d u c t stone,、uh, especially for treatment of difficult stones. So, endoscopic removal of b i l e d u c t stone、uh, it consists of three、uh, procedures. Such as BDA cannulation, ampullary intervention, and the stone extraction. So, ampullary intervention includes ESD, endoscopic sphincterotomy, and EPBD, endoscopic papillary balloon dilation. This is a, a standard schema a technique of ERCP. First, three BDA cannulation and the confirmation of the CBD stone by the injection of the contrast. And the next is、uh, ampullary intubation, EST, or EPBD, balloon dilation. And finally,、uh, stone extraction <coughs> is performed using the basket catheter or balloon catheter. And、uh, ERCP, as I said, is very useful and、uh, effective treatment for CBD stone. But、uh, the, all clinicians or endoscopists should recognize the severe complication or the possibility of severe complication. Such as、uh, post ERC pancreatitis, PEP. The PEP occurs, uh, uh, left, slide, left figure shows a PEP, and the right figure shows a worm developed after PEP. Severe PEP occurs is、uh, about 0.1% of all patients, and the mortality rate of ERCP is 0.01%.、Uh, <coughs> so、uh, all clinicians should recognize that PEP. Is one of the most serious complications associated with endoscopic procedures. We have to be very careful. <clears throat> And、uh, let's back to the management of b i o l o g i c stone. So, what is difficult stone? This is a flow chart is,、uh, from the ESG guideline, the European Gastroenterological、uh, Society, in、uh, 2019. In this chart, is a difficult stone is defined as a larger. The size is larger than 1.5 centimeter at multiple stone. And for these stones, difficult stones,、uh, guideline recommends、uh, EPLBD, means、uh, endoscopic papillary large balloon dilation. And like this, like this figure, you can see the multiple and the large size CBD stones. For these patients, I recommend the EPLBD. So, EPLBD means、uh, endoscopic papillary large balloon dilation. It's、uh, a procedure using large balloon dilation, <coughs> use large balloon to dilate the orifice of papilla, and with or without ESD. And the aim of the EPLBD is to improve the rate of complete stone removal in a single session and to shorten the procedure time. Okay, again, I would like to show the concept of EPLBD using a video. <clears throat> so firstly, I like to insert the duodenoscope to the major papilla. And you can see the multiple stones and cannulation and contrast injection. After that,、uh, ESD. In addition, the large balloon is used. And after the sufficient、uh, dilation of the bile duct, the complete stone removal very easily performed. This is a, a balloon added. Okay, it's a concept of EPLBD. I think it's very useful a procedure, but the indication is、uh, EPLBD is、uh, shown in this slide.、Uh, as you can see the, in the left part, And the sufficient dilation of distal bile duct is a good candidate of the EPLBD. On the other hand, the, the patients with b i l i a r stenosis is a contraindication of this procedure and because,、uh, the, because of high risk of the perforation or b i l i a r injury. So I'd like to show the、uh, presentable case of <coughs> large、uh, difficulties. That is the same schema as I presented in the previous slide. You can see the multiple large、uh, CBD stones. And this is a video for all these patients.
So I will uh, build a and uh, confirm the multiple stones. And the first three, ESD, uh, was performed using a swing telotomy. Yeah, after them, uh, EPLBD <coughs> was performed using a large balloon. This is a fluoroscopic view. After the EPLBD, uh, sufficient dilation of the orifice was achieved. So uh, we I used the balloon catheter to extract the stone. And finally, the large stone should be extracted using the a mechanical restripsy to prevent the impaction of the stone. Okay, this is a figure after the EPLBD. As you can see, the multiple large stone is completely extracted. The procedure time is, in this case, I, I think it's uh, only 30 minutes. So uh, if the, uh, of course, the indication is very important, but EPRBD, this procedure is very useful for these patients. Okay, finally, I'd like to uh, introduce a recent uh, randomized control trial, RCT, conducted in Japan uh, regarding the EPRBD versus ESD. So in this study, uh, see the patients with CBD stones larger than 10 millimeter, it's a large stone, were included and uh, randomized into the EPLBD without ESD or ESD alone. And as a result, and the single session complete stone removal rate was significantly higher uh, in the EPLBD group without the ESD group uh, rather than the ESD group. And the adverse events, including PEP, is uh, almost same in the both uh, groups. So uh, from this study, maybe, I usually perform ESD prior to EPLBD, but is uh, maybe EPLBD without ESD is maybe one of the option for large CBD stone. But it's a further, further larger study is required. Okay, this is uh, my take home message. And appropriate diagnosis and grading is essential for treatment of acute bronchitis. And most viral stones nowadays uh, can be managed with ERCP, as I showed uh, in the video. And in the difficult case, uh, I recommend the EPLBD is recommended. So this procedure is an effective method for difficult stones. Okay, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to present my <coughs> uh, my endoscopy procedure. And this this is I just one year ago. We went to uh, Myanmar in your country and uh, perform ERCP with uh, all with many uh, medical staffs. So I'd like to, uh, I hope in the future after the overcoming of COVID-19, I'd like to go to uh, your country again. Thank you for kind attention. Okay, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Fujimori for your very nice presentation about ERCP. Now it's a time for question and answer. The first question, uh, sir, for Professor Moriyama, what medication do you use for mucus and foam removal for upper GI examination in Japan? Okay, for the PrEP, the anti-foam agent and the mucolytic agent is essential. So then the usually we add the Simechicon and Acetylcysteine will be included in the water, and we irrigate <coughs> this, uh, this agent and uh, via the scope channel just before the observation. Uh, thank you. What What do you think about COVID? During COVID time, do you usually use that semidico and other agent in endoscopic procedure during COVID time? Yes. We okay. usually use because you know, without removing mucus and the forms, it's very difficult to detect an early cancer in the stomach. Yes. Now, second question for colonoscopy Do you usually use the five assistant endoscopy to improve ADR for colonoscopy? Uh, 
I think the uh, most uh, useful device uh, is a capital C uh, colonoscopy. Uh, and uh, using a pigment is useful. Uh, and I, I mostly use uh, the two things. Right. So you usually use a cap in your day-to-day -day practice. Eh? So that question is, for detection of colorated poly, vitroflexion is done in both right or left side of colon. Which part of the colon for reflection? Uh, we, uh, we must uh, pay attention to uh, this call operation and uh, it is difficult to uh, use this uh, little friction uh, techniques in the right side of the colon, uh, sorry, uh, left side of the colon. And it is useful that this technique in uh, mostly uh, right side of the colon and uh, rectum, in rectum. Okay. Another question for ERCP. How long do you inflate the balloon for EBRBD? Uh, the question is the uh, uh, time of the uh, dilation time. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, usually uh, 15 or 30 seconds. And uh, if you can see the uh, disappearance of notch, I think it's enough. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, did you usually do endoscopic spinotomy before dilatation? Routinely do endoscopic spinotomy. Your your question is regarding the EST prior EPLBD. Yeah. Yes. Before BD, uh, balloon dilatation, did you do EST? Yeah. Yeah. I usually perform the EST. But it's a recent study or recent publication tends to uh, be about the without ESD. Only EPLBD is enough. Mm, I, I, I don't have the conclusive comment. Right. But right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's a, uh, for the patients with coagulopathy and, and some patients uh, who has a drug, ant anticoagulants, mm -hmm. it's a very tendency of bleeding. So, I recommend only EPLBD without EST. And the surgical order anatomy, sometimes very difficult for ERCP. So uh, for EST, uh, I also recommend uh, only EPLBD. Uh, thank you. The next question for H. pylori. For patients with atrophic gastritis and intestinal metaplasia, how frequent should we do endoscopic screening? Thank you for good questions. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a definite answer to this question still. But in, uh, in Japan, usually we recommend the people uh, with atrophic gastritis or intestinal metaplasia to undergo an annual or biannual uh, endoscopic exam. Okay. Uh, I think this is the last question for our session. So after H. pylori eradication, rapid urea test is used to confirm eradication if endoscopy is indicated. Okay, rapid urea is not good enough to check the status of H. pylori after eradication because its sensitivity and the specificity is not so high comparing to the urea breast test. So uh, usually better to use the urea breast test to check the status after eradication. Okay, so it's uh, nearly uh, one hour. So I really excuse, think- Excuse me, excuse me, yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Yes. yes. Because we still have time for five minutes. And uh, actually not a question, maybe that is uh, what we have to do in future. I mean, maybe you already have, because I noticed that if you compare with the Japan and Myanmar, uh, uh, incidents and then also, you know, mortality uh, quite, you know, striking. 
uh, uh, figure. That's so why I would like to know uh, the question actually to the Seattle Premier. And then also maybe I, we would like to have advice from the Japanese team and how we can reduce the mortality. Are there any national plan to reduce the mortality for the gastric cancer and colorectal cancer? Thank you. Well, and then the Japanese team, you can give advice to us. Uh, thank you for, for your very good questions. For to reduce the uh, mortality of gastric cancer and colon cancer, the early detection is an uh, important issue. For that, we need to educate people, um, medical doctors for early detection of gastric cancer and colon cancer. And then we must force and advise to health authority, including minister for screening program for gastric cancer and colon cancer. So screening is a quite quite important to detect early gastric cancer and early colon cancer. If we detect early gastric cancer in early state, the mortality will definitely reduce. Yeah, and that's why I, I was thinking, you know, uh, to have an early detection, uh, we, need, we need human resource for the early diagnosis, and then also facility and technology. Maybe a three, maybe maybe three things. Yep. Uh, uh, for that, human resource. I just like to ask to the Japanese team. Uh, like Myanmar, we have fifty-four million. You have one twenty-five million or something like that. One twenty-six. And uh, in your country, how many people they can? do diagnosis in the gastric cancer? I mean, uh, uh, doctors or the, how you organize and how you set up the US system? Okay. Uh, all right, well, the, the, regarding the human resources, uh, it's very, very difficult. Actually, you know, we have a long history to overcome gastric cancer. So uh, education is most important, I think. So the, as as I as I and the Dr. Nagahata mentioned, we there are so many tips for detecting flat lesion in GI tract. So to detect such kind of the subtle changes, uh, the experience and the knowledge is needed. By teleconference like this, we can share uh, the knowledge and the experience through teleconferences. So it is very important to join our teleconference or some other webinar from other countries or something. And also the AI, now AI is uh, dramatically spreading to the world, uh, if, uh, especially in the endoscopic field. Uh, some uh, commercial company already launched the early uh, detection system by AI. So this can be a game changer actually, but uh, still there, uh, we should make a uh, responsibility to, for the diagnosis by AI. So we should uh, establish our knowledge through the education, I suppose. And uh, another one is oh. limited. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Because of the short, uh, you know, uh, time. I mean, uh, maybe we organize uh, one a meeting, or maybe we discuss on the online, or maybe discuss on the uh, 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 email uh, for that topics. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, right. Now we have to conclude the. Uh, our session. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Moriyama, for your very interesting le lecture about gastric cancer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nagahara, for your interesting topic about colon cancer. And uh, my thanks uh, will also go to Dr. Fuji Mori for your very interesting presentation about ERCP and CBD store. Uh, I also thanks the Jushu Hospital and the uh, Rector of University of Medicine One and the supporting team, participants, and the JTEC and Professor Shimasu for your <clears throat> kind support for uh, today's symposium. I also thank Myanmar Medical Association for allowing us to participate in your great conference. And thank you, everyone. I hope to see you again soon in person. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Minggu lalu. Bye bye.